Welcome everyone to another two-tailed playthrough. We're down to the last week in October. Man, time's just been flying by, hasn't it? I hope you guys aren't tired of Ghostbusters because I got one more game for you. This time I bring to you Ghostbusters on the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. This Ghostbusters game was developed back in 1990 by Compile and published by Sega. Despite Activision being on the copyright screen, this game is completely unrelated to the NES games. We can thank our lucky stars for that. Ghostbusters on Genesis actually has a completely original story. In this game, the Ghostbusters are down on their luck due to the lack of ghost activity in the city. Money is tight, and if things don't turn around quick, they're going to be out of business. Now, why does that sound familiar? Anyway, all of a sudden, the Ghostbusters get a flurry of calls about all these different ghosts and stuff attacking people in the city. Eventually, the Ghostbusters get the idea that there's something going on behind the scenes, and they have to figure out what it is in order to save the city. Can they do it? We'll soon find out. The game starts out with the Ghostbusters theme song, of course, and they actually do a pretty good job of making it sound pretty creepy. We also get some very nice drawings of the three Ghostbusters, and then it goes to our title screen. Now, I know this may look like the title screen of NES Ghostbusters 1, but trust me, this game is a lot better. They actually do this one right. This one is a run-and-gun shooter. You play as one of the three Ghostbusters and go through each level catching each ghost. Each level has two to four mini-ghosts that you must catch before you can move on and catch the boss ghost of the stage and then complete the stage. If you leave the game on the title screen for a minute or two, you'll get this screen. And then if you leave it here for another minute or so, you'll get a quick demo of the computer playing the game and see how bad, once again, the computer is. Okay, the computer isn't that bad, but it still does some things that make you scratch your head. Alright, let's get started. When you press start, you can either start the game or go into the options. But there's really nothing to do in the options, so start the game. Now you get to choose your Ghostbuster. You can choose from Peter, Ray, or Egon. Peter is balanced, Ray has slow speed but lots of defense, and Egon is the fastest character but has no health. Where's Winston, you may ask? Good question. Anyway, once you choose your Ghostbuster, the story starts. The story starts out with the Ghostbusters sitting around discussing what's been going on. Apparently there was an earthquake, and then they started getting all these calls about ghosts. Now they get a call from a young woman who's having ghosts appear in her house and can't get any sleep at night because they keep terrorizing her. Level 1 is an old mansion-sized house. Right away you can see the beautiful graphics of the Mega Drive slash Genesis. Start off the first level by going to the right and jumping up the stairs in front of you. At the top of the stairs, the path splits and you can go in three different directions. Start off by taking the top left path. Follow that path, taking out the ghost as you go along until you come to a safe. Get the safe if you want, it contains a little bit of money, and then keep going left until you come to a ladder. Climb up said ladder and head right again. You'll see a hole as soon as you climb up the ladder, so carefully jump over it and keep heading to the right. Now the tablecloths are attacking. Wonderful! This chandelier likes to throw candles, so be careful when you go underneath it. Our old pal Slimer is back, though this time when you destroy him, he'll drop either a blue or pink bubble. The blue restores your health, whereas the pink restores your energy. Ooh, safes. Alright, money. And money. Yay! These safes are optional, but it's free money, so get it. Either way, drop down this hole when you're ready. Then carefully make your way to the left, dodging the flying coffee pot, tables, and spikes, and in this door as we go to catch our first ghost. This is where the game starts to get really fun. As I said before, each stage usually has two to four of these mini-ghosts here. The first level only has one, since it's the first level. Our first mini-ghost is some guy with a killer mouse ghost in his top hat. Wow, walking legs! Go away, go away, go away! Jerk, how dare you send your legs at me? Unfortunately, the blue guy is invulnerable. The real target is the ghost in his hat. This fight is pretty much a dodging game until he reveals the ghost mouse, which once you hit it enough, will split in two and fly out of the hat. Now the real battle begins. Both parts of the ghost are going to attack you. Dodge the projectiles as best you can and keep pumping shots into them. Eventually, you'll take them both out. 
Now it's time to trap the ghost. When you grab the ghost with your capture beam, it's actually pretty strong and can, can pull you away pretty easily, so wait till it flies near the trap to try and catch it. Once you catch the ghost, you're rewarded with this screen. Okay, that's done. Since there's only one ghost to catch, we can move on and fight the boss ghost. Go right and head up the ladder, take out Slimer for some extra health or energy, then go through the door. Boss time! What the heck? Uh, catching ghosts? Sorry. Wonderful. Okay, so our boss for this level is this green thing. He's gonna bounce at us and use Razor Leaf? Yeah. Once he shoots out all his Razor Leaf things, he'll be really skinny, and that's your cue to shoot him. Then his head will drop and start rolling at you before he combines again and the process repeats. So you gotta dodge his Razor Leaves, shoot him when he gets really skinny, dodge his rolling head, and then repeat the process. As you're shooting at him, you'll notice he starts to change color. This color change is the closest thing you're gonna get to a health bar. He changes color three times, and after the third time, you've only got a few more hits before he's done. Once you take him out, all his projectiles are destroyed, and you get to watch the interesting death scene. Okay, so the head floats away, and whoa, the eyeballs fell out. Cool. Then the whole thing explodes, and you're left with a stone tablet. I wonder what that could be. Well, with that tablet in hand, we've completed the first level. Hooray! After each level, you get the Daily Sega News. This is one epic newspaper. It's got the same picture that we saw when we caught the mini-ghost, and it calls us Ghost Cops. After that, we get a word from the client who hired us to catch the ghost in the level, and then we get paid. Hooray! Yes, yes it will. Woo, party! Forget the tablet, I want a party! Really? You don't say. Don't all tablets have letters on them? Yeah, you gotta get in touch with Indiana Jones. What? But what about the party? Fine. Alright, after the interesting story scene, we're left with a choice. We can either go right to the next level, or go to the item or weapon shops. Right now our funds are really low, so we're just gonna go right to the next level, which is an apartment building. We'll get 4,000 for completing this level. I see that. Did you make sure your toilet wasn't overflowing? Yes! We'll fix that toilet! Leave it to us! Level 2 has two middle ghosts. Double your pleasure, double your fun. Um, you said there was water everywhere, not ice. If you've seen the ABGN review, you'll know that each level is pretty maze-like. There are many different paths you can take, most of which lead to treasure and or dead ends. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. You're gonna need a lot of money to buy better and newer equipment. Yes, once again, you have to buy your equipment. The best part is who sells it to you. The jumps start to get a little tricky here, but they are makeable. You just gotta be really precise. Now here we have a bunch of ice blocks. Unfortunately, we can't destroy them. We have to wait for these little ghosts here to clear the way for us. Once they make a path, take them out and then fall along the path they made. Do the same thing with the second set of ghosts you come to. It would really be nice if we could just pick up one of their pickaxes and make our own path. But nope, you gotta wait for them. So let them make the path for you, then climb up the ladder. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to dodge these guys. I guess you just fire fast enough you can take them out. Either way, get past them and then go through the door. It's time for our second middle boss, the first one of this stage. This time we're fighting this weird siren thing that likes to split into three and attack you. Only one of them is real and will take damage. So once you find out which one it is, focus on that one and then dodge the shot they fire at you, which thankfully isn't tough to do. Thankfully it doesn't take many shots before it starts to change colors.
After it's defeated, it's time to catch it. Wait till it flies near the trap, and then you can just shoot the beam at it and don't have to try so hard to pull it into the trap. Then you get the same picture as before. Every time you catch a middle boss, you're gonna get that scene. A backtracking we will go, head back through the same door and take out the same ghost as before, going back the exact same way. Thankfully, the ghosts have had plenty of time to clear out a path, so we don't have to wait too long. If you have a bomb, I recommend using one here, so you take out everything on screen and won't take any damage. Ignore the ladder we came from and head right. Now it's time for some fun platforms. Carefully jump up the small ice platforms to the ceiling. Grab the safe if you want. More money. At the top, make your way to the right along more small platforms. You can shoot the icicles to keep them from hitting you. It'll make the jumping a little easier. Climb up the two ladders, shooting the ghost and then the icicles as you make your way across the top. When you get to the end, jump down and go through the door. It's time for the next middle boss. This time we have this crystal golem thing. The first thing he's going to try and do is try to shoot you with an ice beam and freeze you. As long as you don't jump, the beam will go right over your head and you can shoot him in the face the whole time. After that, he'll latch onto the ceiling and swing at you like a gymnast, so duck down and he'll go right over you. Then get up and shoot him in the face again as the process repeats. Eventually, he'll just start walking towards you and try and jump on you before swinging from the ceiling again. Just keep shooting him and eventually he'll go down, revealing the green form. Wait for it to fly towards the trap and then latch onto him let him pull you right to it. You've got it! Both middle ghosts are down, so it's time to take on the boss. Go through the door on the left and holy fish icicles. Shoot the icicles and quickly make your way across the room and to the next door, and it's time for the boss. Okay, that's just really creepy. Sure, okay. What bargain? What am I getting out of this? That mouth just creeps me the heck out. So Boss 2 is this creepy snowman. His only form of attack is to create smaller snowmen which fly at you and shoot their carrot noses. So take out the smaller snowmen and then keep shooting the big one. After a few hits, he'll finally start to change color. You know, this would really change the whole Frosty the Snowman song around. Oh, there must have been some curse on that old silk hat they found. Cause when they placed it on his head, he came to life and tried to kill them all. Yeah, the kitties would love that one. Then again, maybe that's Jack Frost theme song. I don't know, I haven't seen that one. Well, I've seen the family one with Michael Keaton, but I haven't seen the horror one. Anyway, keep killing the small snowman and shooting him in the face, and he'll eventually turn to red, which means he's just about done. There we go. Wave bye-bye, and explode. Or melt. Same difference. He drops another stone tablet, and that's the end of the level. Hooray! And once again, we get the Daily Sega News. Are they ever gonna get the name right? Yes, we are real. And you want us to have this? This is our payment. You were supposed to pay us this. What do you mean, at last? It's not like we've been hunting this thing for centuries. Guess you couldn't get a hold of Indy, huh? What riddle? Since when was there a riddle? Right, but again, when was there a riddle? Oh really? Well that's interesting. Now we've got a little bit of money, so we can actually buy our first weapon upgrade. Yes, we are. Wait, are you Dr. Emmett Brown? Really? I thought Egon made all our weapons. Though if he did, I guess we wouldn't have to buy new ones. Okay, let's take a look. We already have energy regeneration. That's refilling our energy. Then we have explosive. This fires a shot that causes a giant explosion after it's shot. It's nice, but not what we want right now. Here we have the bubble projectile. Might as well call this the bubble bobble gun. 
You shoot bubbles, they touch enemies, and trap them inside. Easy enough, but again, not what we want. Phaser Shell. This is a big cannon. We will be picking this up at one point because it's really powerful. Three-way shot. This is what we're getting right now. If you've ever played Contra, you know the spread gun is one of the most powerful. That's pretty much what this is, except it only shoots three shots. Still, it's very nice. Here we have an energy tank. Buying these will increase your max energy. Each time you buy one, the price increases until you finally max out. I'm gonna buy a few here. Next is a special suit. This is a defensive weapon that forms a bubble-like shield around you, and that reduces the damage you take from enemies and stage hazards. We will pick this up eventually. Next is the barrier, which is the most expensive weapon. It forms a defensive barrier which can deflect enemy shots. Unfortunately, it costs a whole lot of energy, so it's not really worth buying. And that's all the weapons you can purchase in the game. Now it's off to level 3, which is called Woody House. Uh-huh. Well, it's six grand, plus the money for the middle ghosts. That sounds like a boiler exploding, or kids playing pranks, or something. Okay, maybe it wasn't a boiler. Sure, we'll do what we can. Another two middle ghosts. Cool. First thing you'll notice is you can't see anything. So press start and use your infrared scopes that you come with. You start with two, but you can buy more in the item shop. The infrared scope will show the entire screen, making it much easier to navigate. Holy crap, flame cat dog things. If you quickly jump off the ledge, you can jump down to the bottom of this ladder here and the flames will go right above you. Then climb up and take out the flames up top. You can't take out the blue flame, so let it jump over you or jump over it and then continue on being careful of the platforming. You're going to want to jump up, and right, and then work your way to the left and up. Yay, more saves. Again, you don't have to get them, but it's free money and you're going to need money to buy more equipment and such. Wonderful, our first moving platforms. Just time your jump and jump up here to this ladder. Then climb up and go through the door on the left for the first middle ghost. Now here I'm going to equip the three-way shot, as we're doing battle with a giant fire dragon. The three-way shot makes this fight much easier. When the dragon appears, quickly shoot him in the face as much as you can. Then jump back before he can shoot his fire at you so you don't get hit. Repeat the process and he'll be dead before you know it. Time to catch another green thing. Once again, wait till it's moving towards the trap, so when you grab it, it pulls you into it, and it's easier to catch. You got it! Woo! Okay, now we're going back the way we came and working our way down. This time, we're going to go to the right, where we'll find another ladder we can climb up, which gets us behind the flame pillars. Kill the Slimer for more health or energy if you want. Then walk over here and wait for the blue guy to walk over and jump on him. It'll propel you upward like a trampoline, allowing you to get over the top. You can land on this ledge for another safe if you want. If not, just fall all the way down and go down the ladder at the bottom. This part is fun. If you have the special suit, you'll take a little less damage, but you don't really need it. Wait for the flames to go all the way down, then quickly jump over them before they come back up. If you get hit, don't worry about it, you don't take too much damage. In the next room, you gotta be careful. When you see a torch, the flame will fall and send a small fire across the floor. Jump if it hits the ground so you don't get caught in it. Work your way over to the left and go down the ladder, being careful of the flames that will block your path. When you get down here, the flames start small, but when you walk forward, they rise up and shoot the cute little spirit things at you. So just stand in front of them and fire as the spirits jump out, and you'll take them out. There are four pillars, and only the first and third ones shoot the spirits at you. The other two just block your path. If at any time the screen starts to get darker, that means your infrared scope is wearing off. At this time, you can either use another infrared scope, or wait until it gets to its smallest point. It's your choice. I'm going to use one right now so I can see. 
kind of have to since it's time for the second middle ghost. This time we have a flame dancer thing. He likes to jump over you and do a flip and then shoot out a spread of fireballs. Sometimes he'll jump low and sometimes he'll jump high. If he jumps too low, you may need to duck so he can clear you. When he jumps higher, just aim up and shoot at him. It's best to not jump during this fight so you don't run the risk of jumping into him. Just keep shooting him and eventually he'll start changing colors. I really like this dark blue color. I think it looks really cool. Little green guy again. You should know what to do by now. Wait for him to start going towards the trap and let him pull you right to it. You got it! That's two down, time to go to the boss. Head back to the left, going through the same door you came through, and we have to go all the way back through this gauntlet of flames. This time through, the second and fourth flame walls are going to shoot the fire spirits at you. Up the ladder to Flame Gauntlet Part 2. Yay! Time for Part 3. Once again, wait for the flames to go down and then jump over them before they come back up. If you get hit like I just did, again, it doesn't hurt that much. Climb back up the ladder and now go to the left. Now we have some more fun platforming as we're jumping on really small pegs in the wall. Unfortunately, you can't take too much time as some of them will catch fire and fall, causing you to fall down and take damage and possibly die. At the top of the ladder, you can jump to the left and get a safe, or jump to the right on the moving platforms and continue on. Climb the ladder and then go left and through the door, and it's boss time. Ah, fire face. Really? Well, you did set the place on fire. You can try. The boss of stage 3 is a giant flaming face on the wall. He's going to appear on one side of the room or the other, and you have to shoot him in the mouth to do damage to him. The best weapon to use against this guy is the phaser shot which eventually we will pick up, but the three-way shot works well too. Get close to him when you can and shoot him in the mouth as much as you can. Sometimes he pops up upside down in the wall, making it a little tricky to hit him. This will probably be the longest battle so far. When he changes colors twice, you know you've got him on the ropes. Just keep hitting him and eventually he'll fade away. Don't worry if you run out of energy, it'll just revert back to a single shot weapon. After a lot of shooting, he'll finally crumble and fade away. I'm not doing that. If you don't touch anything for a few seconds, your character will duck down and start looking back and forth. What a surprise, he leaves another stone tablet. That's the end of this level. Daily Sega News. The name is still wrong. Yes, you did your job, to show my appreciation, I'm going to pay you. Right. Thanks. Yep, we have three pieces. Huh. I'm not sure if they screwed up here and left in an extra line or not. Yeah, that would be nice. You have been doing all the work. Wait, a date with who? What, is it broken? Oh, it's spiking. Okay, so the thing radiates energy. That good or bad? How do you figure that? 
Seriously, how'd you come to that conclusion? Yeah, that's what we've been trying to do from the start. Okay, now it's time to stock up on some items. Yeah, we are, but who are you? Anyway, generic Chinese guy will sell us two types of food, which of course restore health, more infrared scopes, which we will buy, they of course reveal dark areas, letting you see the whole screen. I'm gonna buy a couple of them. You can carry a maximum of nine of these things, which is more than we'll ever need. He also sells bombs. I don't know how to take that, but bombs in this game destroy all enemies on screen. They're pretty nice to have. Now that we're stocked up on items, I'm gonna head into the weapon shop real quick and buy the phaser cannon and another energy tank. Now we're gonna head on to the next level. Level 4 is the high-rise building. Hmm, it looks a lot like the Zool building. A strange entity. Can you be more specific? We can, but you better pay up. Once again, we have two middle ghosts. This shouldn't be too hard. First, we're going up the first ladder. Head to the right and go past the first ladder you come to, and go down the second one. Watch out for the haunted coffee mug, and holy moly! Hey, that fist looked familiar. With it gone, head to the right and go up the ladder at the end, then go back to the left. Hey, I know that face. Jump up the stairs to the left and watch out for the slinky enemy on the ceiling. Everyone loves a slinky until it attacks you. Jump up the platform and then go through the door on the right. Middle boss one. Once again, I'm going to equip my three-way shot. This time, the middle boss is a floating eyeball worm thing. As you keep shooting it, the eyeballs will break off and turn into purple eyeballs like the head of the thing and float around by themselves. Eventually, all the eyeballs will be purple and you'll have to destroy them before the green form will appear and you can catch it. It can be a little tough when you have a bunch of them on the screen. Just do your best to dodge them and try not to jump too much. Thankfully, they don't take too many hits to take down, especially with the three-way shot. It's that time again. You got it! With that goes down, we're heading back to the left, back where we came from. Kill the Slimer if you want a small refill. Hopefully he'll drop what you need. Jump back down and head back to the right along the same path we took to get here. There's that face again. He looks so familiar, I know I've seen him somewhere. Head back up that first ladder, making your way back to the left. This time, we're going up the ladder we passed last time and continuing on to the left, dodging the haunted coffee mugs. Once you get by the mugs, duck and crawl towards the stairs as another fist is going to break through the wall. Then when you get up top, take out the silverware and the slinky on the ceiling and get by another haunted mug. There's another tablecloth ghost. Nothing too hard. Climb up the ladder and keep going left, taking out more slinkies. When you come to the vertical thing in the background, duck as another fist is going to break through the wall. Somebody really doesn't like this building. Climb up the ladder and keep going right. Hey look, plates! Paul! Plates, silverware, tablecloths, these ghosts love the bewitched kitchen utensils. There he is again! No, I've seen him somewhere. It'll come to me. Okay, way off to the right, there's three safes full of goodies, but it's a little far from me. So go to the left through the door and jump in the water. This is the first Ghostbusters game that actually lets you go swimming with the Proton Pack. Actually, I think it's the only Ghostbusters game where you swim at all. Make your way down and under, taking out the tentacle monsters. Again, you can get the safes if you want. These are right here, so I'm gonna grab them. Once you're on the other side, head back to the surface and climb up, where you'll see a door on your right. Go inside, and it's time for the second middle boss. I have no idea what this thing is. It's like a weird ball monster. All I know is it's really easy. 
He floats above your head and shoots at you, eventually breaking apart. When he splits apart, he reveals himself and you can shoot at him. Just keep shooting up, not worrying about his projectiles because you destroy them with your shots. Eventually, he'll go down and you can capture the green form. You got it! With him done, a ladder appears. I wonder if that's where we're supposed to go. Climb up the ladder and reach the rooftop where we fight the boss of the stage. You should know who it is by now. Yeah, so do I. Wait, what? So you used to be a person who just ate way too many marshmallows? Holy crap, how many marshmallows did you eat? When the Marshmallow Man's face appears, aim up and start shooting him. He'll try to punch you from the side of the screen, so stay towards the middle. Sometimes, Stay Puff's eyes will flash. If they turn blue, he's gonna shoot lasers at you. Quickly run to the left or right to dodge them. If they flash yellow, he's gonna shoot a swirling fireball at you. This is a little tougher to dodge, as it kinda homes in on you. Run to the right or left, and then jump over it when you can. The fireball will then swerve away from you. Try to stay towards the middle as best you can so you avoid his fist and keep shooting him in the face, dodging whatever attacks he throws at you. It'll take a little while because he has a ton of health, but eventually he will go down and you'll get the fourth and final piece of the tablet. This level's done! Daily Sega News, you failed me. Um, I only risked my life here and fought a hundred foot marshmallow man for your stupid building. I don't think it's too much. In fact, it's probably not enough. Sure, once you know how to say it, right? Seriously, Ray, don't you have a PhD in something? Or some kind of degree? Brilliant observation! You've got mail. Oh great, a ransom letter. What do you know? Arthur? King Arthur? What does he want it for? He's already got Excalibur. Either King Arthur or Knight Arthur pissed at the demons for always stealing his girl. Gee, thanks, Doc. Whoa, nice shades. Grandpa? What the heck? Okay, he did research on ghosts. Then what? Really? Drop the tablet, Ray. It's gonna eat you. The power to eat people, apparently. Nah, it's probably just some ancient TV guide. Well, yeah, you're not the Ghostbusters without those two. Okay, before going on to the next level, I'm gonna go into the weapon shop here and buy another energy tank. And now we're maxed out. So now we can go on to the next level, which is the old castle. Wow, now we have four middle ghosts. Don't let that scare you, it's just the same as before. Um, no? I've got this nuclear-powered pack on my back that could melt your face off. Give me back my friends. Failed once at what? What are you trying to succeed at now? You must really want to know what they watched on TV way back then. Please? In the castle somewhere? Didn't you bring them there? You just said, here, wander around, find your own prison? Yeah, of course you don't, jerk. Alright, time for the castle. I'm gonna equip my phaser shell for something coming up. Ignore the first ladder and walk off the edge down below. When you come to the green things here, shoot the balls in the center to destroy the barriers they're making. There are a few of these things, and if you have the phaser shell, it makes quick work of them. If you fire a phaser shell just as you're coming up to the chairs, the shot will follow you around screen and take out the doll enemies that are waiting for you on the chairs. Then all you have to worry about are the spinning sickles. Climb up the ladder and go to the left and get ready to dodge the sickles. When you get close to one, quickly duck down and it'll swing right over you. It's pretty tough to get past these without taking a hit, but if you take your time, you'll be able to do it no problem. When you get up top, quickly throw a bomb to take out the enemy that would shoot at you, then ride up the moving platform and jump off to the right. Waiting for you up top is another barrier enemy, so shoot the ball and then pass through, being very careful as there's a swinging sickle right after the barrier. 
drop down to the bottom and through the door for the first middle boss. The first middle boss is Possess Ghostbuster number one. For me, it's Peter, but it could be different depending on which Ghostbuster you're using. Shoot at the ghost possessing him and try not to shoot your friend. If you have the phaser shell, it'll die really quick. Once it's defeated, it'll leave your friend, then you can catch it and move on. You've got it! Yep, still get this screen. Your friend is rescued and disappears to who knows where. So go back out the door to the left and jump to the middle platform here, being careful not to jump all the way up or you'll get hit by the sickle. Take out the barrier and then carefully jump up so you don't get hit by the sickle and go to the left. This time, you're going to jump off the moving platform to the left and jump down. Here we have some skeletons that run back and forth and even one that breaks out of a steel grate. Go up the first ladder you come to and go all the way up. Throw a bomb to take out some orbs that would shoot at you, then work your way to the right, ducking under sickles and throwing bombs as needed. When you get to the end, climb up the ladder. There's some really fun platforming coming up. You have to jump off the blue springing enemy to these really small grass platforms, then onto these slightly longer extending ones until you can get all the way up here and go through the door. It's time for middle boss number two, which happens to be our other possessed friend. Do the same thing you did for the first one, taking out the ghost possessing him until he leaves his body and you can catch him. You got it! Again, I think it'd be funny if your friend was standing in the background all dazed. Just for that one since you just rescued him. Well, those two anyway. For this next part, I'm going to put on the three-way shot as it makes things a little easier. Jump off to the right and fall all the way down to the bottom and go through the door. Watch out for the sickle and go all the way to the right to jump up on the first moving platform. Then work your way up the other platforms as you go up towards the top of the room. When you reach the very top platform, there's going to be a skeleton running at you, so quickly fire to take him out. Then go through the door and get ready for the third middle boss. This time, the middle boss is a giant caterpillar thing. Of course, instead of turning into a butterfly, this one splits into several smaller parts which float up in the air above you and swoop down at you trying to kill you. I'm sure glad there aren't caterpillars like this out there. For the most part, just keep aiming up and firing, taking them out as much as you can. The three-way shot really helps here, as it helps you hit more than one at a time, and also delivers a lot of shots to each one you shoot at. Eventually, you'll whittle them away till there's just a handful left, and it'll be easy to take them all out. Once you defeat the last one, it transforms into the familiar green form, and you can catch it and move on. Do I really need to say it? With that ghost down, we've got one more middle ghost to go. So go back through the door we came from, take out the skeleton that's running at you, and go all the way back down to the bottom. Go through the same door, then use the blue guy to jump up to the small platform. That's where we actually came from in the first place. This time, however, we're not going back down, but crawling across the top. The sickles make this pretty tricky, so crawl when necessary to get underneath them. Once you make it to the ladder, climb up and go through the door on the right. We're at the fourth middle ghost. This time we're fighting Death himself! Wow, Death even makes cameos in Ghostbusters. For the most part, Death will be at the top of the screen floating back and forth. Take your best shot and try to shoot him in the face, that's where you gotta hit him. Again, if you have the phaser shell, he'll take a lot of damage. Eventually, he'll swoop down next to you and start charging up an attack, where he'll create four sickles that will grow and circle outward at you. Just keep hitting him, and eventually he'll turn into the green form, revealing he actually wasn't death, and you'll be able to catch him. No, I refuse. Alright, that's all four. Now it's time for the boss ghost. I wonder who it's gonna be. I'm switching back to the three-way shot because I prefer it, but feel free to use whatever weapon you want. Jump up and go to the left, ignoring the ladder we came from. When you get to the end, drop down and go up the ladder you come to. 
when you get to the top, jump the small gap and go to the top of the small stairs, then stop and turn around, as it's time for some more fun platforming. You have to jump to the very small green platforms above you, which can be pretty tricky. Then you have to get to the top of them and jump onto a platform to the left, where you can climb up the ladder and take out another barrier plant thing, and finally go through the door to fight the boss of the stage. I wonder what it's going to be this time. It's Petey Piranha? What the heck? Okay, apparently he, this guy belongs at the top of a beanstalk. Rule you, I just want to stop you from destroying my world. I thought he did. Didn't he have the tablet and then disappear? Huh. Well, I hate to break it to you, but I don't think the Ghostbusters are very healthy. Sure, let's get McDonald's. Our boss this time is a giant PD Piranha lookalike. Despite his appearance, this is actually a very easy fight. As soon as the fight starts, immediately duck down. You're gonna be ducking for this entire fight. I strongly recommend using the phaser shell if you haven't. If not, you can still do this, but it'll just take a little longer. Stay on the ground and crawl back and forth, dodging the pods the little vines shoot at you. While you're on the ground, he can't hit you with his laser beam, and it's very easy to dodge the pods. Then just keep shooting him. You have to wait for him to shoot the laser before you can actually hit him, as you have to hit him in the mouth. Focus on dodging and shoot when you can. It won't take long at all for him to start changing colors and eventually go down. Eventually he'll explode, and this time we get a red skull thing instead of a tablet. That also ends the level. Hooray! You know, I'm gonna cancel my subscription if you can't get the name right. I don't care how good the paper girl is. Um, I don't think he died, he just ran away. Yeah, the lust for power does that to people. Then they realize they can't handle it and get killed. Oh, thank you. Does that mean you're gonna give me free stuff, too? That wasn't luck. I knew what I was doing. We're all adults here, Ray. You can use stronger words than that. So it does have that power. What do you know? Well, that's obvious. I don't think that would be such a good idea. I tried to tell you not to do that. Dummies. Don't worry, if it's anything like the earthquake we had back in August, it'll just knock over a lawn chair. Okay, never mind, this one's a lot bigger. It's never a good thing when a giant gaping hole emerges in the center of the city. Yeah, you can kind of see that if you step outside. Now you listen, I tried to tell you not to do that. Wait, what? Since when could you decipher the thing? I thought we needed Indiana Jones for that. Oh, wonderful. I liked it better when it was an ancient TV guide. I'm not gonna say I told you so. I did say I didn't think it was such a good idea to do that. Exactly. A little late on that one. Did you not just feel the giant earthquake and see the giant hole open up in the city? Yeah, the thing he just said check the TV for? No, that hole is for- oh, wait, you mean the hole in the city? Blame someone else and seek counseling. I think we're all gonna die. Can't I just take the red thing out and put in a blue marble? Wouldn't that work? Ray, we only got the red one. I have a blue marble we can try, though. You're not excused. This is a private conversation. Go away. Nope, we turned our TV to Playboy and lost the remote. Sorry. What power do you have? You're just a representative. You're not the mayor. 
No, Ray, let those ghost cops do it. Sure, we'll get to it in a week or so. What, you want it done now? Fine. Pfft, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Alright, I got the redhead. Er, oh, wait, that... never mind, let's go! Okay, before heading out into the corridor of evil, I'm gonna buy some more bombs, and then a couple more infrared scopes. Then, because this is the last level, I'm gonna spend the rest of my money on what I can buy here. Just to have the stuff. That's all but two inventions. Alright, time for the last level, simply called Deep Hole. Get your minds out of the gutter, you crazy people. Welcome to the last level. Kinda looks like we're inside some alien or something. Start off by walking to the right and working your way down, riding down the moving platform as well and jumping off when you can. When you get off the platform, jump over the green thing and ride the next platform down, falling off and landing on the platform below that, and then landing on the one below that. Jump over the two green things and then fall all the way down to the bottom past the next two platforms. We are now at the first middle boss, which is someone we've seen already. Yes, believe it or not, this last level starts out like a boss rush. But this time, we have all these high-tech weapons to use against them, so they're gonna go down even quicker. Our first fight is the boss of the first level, the Fat Green Thing. Once again, wait for him to shoot out all his razor leaves and get really skinny, then shoot him, and he'll roll his head at you. Then, of course, jump over the head and repeat the process. Phaser Shell makes quick work of this thing. This time, however, instead of dropping a tablet, they turn into the familiar green ghost that you get to catch. Guess what comes next? Yep. I like how the background is still the same as well. It still looks like we're in that same house. Well, that's one down. Head back to the right and ride up the moving platform. When it reaches the top, jump off and jump to the next moving platform, and then jump off to the ledge right next to it. Jump over the two green things and ignore the next moving platform you come to, instead jumping over the gap to the right and heading to the right. The first green thing on this side will actually shoot spines at you, so you have to get by it quickly. Ignore the moving platform and jump all the way down, making your way up and to the right. Walk into the small room and we'll fight our second mid boss, Wannabe Jack Frost. For him, I like to use the three-way shot because he's got such a small hitbox. He's no different than before. In fact, he's a little easier with the three-way shot. Just keep shooting at him until he eventually goes away. There we go. Time for another green thing. Yay, recycled picture! Alright, two down, two to go. Head back to the left, working your way back up the way you came. This time, ride up the moving platform at the top, and jump off to the right. You have to use the blue guy to jump up to the higher ledge on the right, and then jump over the green things, jump down to the bottom, and then work your way back up on the ledges to the right. At the top, work your way to the left, taking out the enemies. Be careful of the green thing that's going to shoot spikes at you. Jump up to the top area and ride the moving platform up. Then jump up and ride on the next moving platform over to the right, where there's more green things. You work your way into the small room on the right for middle boss number three. 
It's Peeny Piranha! We just did this! Just like before, duck down and stay ducking. Just like the others, he's got the exact same pattern. So just keep moving back and forth, dodging and shooting the spores when needed, and keep hitting him. You know, the more I look at this thing, the more I think of the Spore mini-boss from Super Metroid, the one you fight to get the Super Missiles, that you don't actually have to fight if you do it right. Thing number three. Finally. He got another one. Okay, three down. Now I'm gonna switch back to the normal shot just so I can save some energy since I'm getting really low. Go back to the left, past the green things, and jump on the moving platform. Then jump to the next platforms and work your way to the left. Shoot the slimer if you need energy and hope he drops a pink drop. Jump on the moving platform that's going up and down, and ride it all the way to the top. Once there, jump off and go to the left. Now we have a gauntlet of these green things, so jump onto the first one and crawl into the next four, and when you get to the moving platform, I recommend throwing a bomb to take out the enemies on the lower part of the screen. With Dengon, work your way to the right and ride down the moving platforms to the bottom, and then head to the left into the room for the fourth and final mini-boss. It's Goldface again! This time, the room is bigger, so he's, the walls are further apart, making it a little more difficult to see which one he's popping out on. Still, he's just as easy as before, and with the phaser shell, he'll die a lot quicker. If I'd had it when I fought him the first time, I would've used it. Just like before, keep shooting him in the mouth, and sometimes you can actually get him to keep popping out on the same wall. There it is, he's done. Now time to catch one last green thing. You know, I think I'm gonna Photoshop this picture so he's holding a big fish or a sack of potatoes or a baby or something, and then change the caption to something stupid. Thankfully, I believe that's the last time we'll see that. With the face gone, we've taken out all four middle ghosts, so it's time to take on the final boss. Ride back up the moving platforms and work your way through the same little gauntlet you did before. When you get out, instead of jumping back down, jump to the right over the small gap and keep heading to the right. Take out Slimer if you need more energy, which hopefully he'll drop it, and continue to the right. Jump over the three green things and into the room and prepare to face the final boss. I guess we did cause the earthquake. I mean... Really, nice to meet you. I'm Ray. Before you ask, yes, I am a god. Really now? Well, that doesn't sound very fun at all. Don't we get to vote on that? 
Wow, I guess I'm flattered. Okay, after that great introduction, we fight Janna, the Lord of Darkness and Destruction. Though I always thought Bale was the Lord of Destruction, and I think Mephisto was the Lord of Darkness? Anyway, first thing you should do is equip the Phaser Shell if you have it. As you might expect, Janna is an easy boss. She has one attack where she throws a heart at you that bounces, and another attack where she throws her sword. Both are very easy to dodge. When she throws the heart, run forward and she'll actually throw it right over you, or you can get in front of it and let it bounce over your head. The sword is a little tricky to dodge. When you see your arm coming forward, run back as far as you can. The sword won't go all the way, and you'll be able to avoid taking damage. You have to shoot her in the eye to do damage to her, and after a while, her left arm will break off and she won't be able to throw hearts anymore. She'll also change color. This also means you're on the phase 2, which is a little more difficult, but still very easy. Janna will start floating around the room throwing her sword at you. Keep aiming up at her where you think the eye will be and keep shooting. Most of the time you'll hit her, but sometimes you will miss. For the most part, she's just going to throw her sword at you wildly. You can dodge it pretty easily by running back like you did before and ducking down. Try to keep as far away from her as you can. If she gets too close, run underneath her and run to the other side of the screen. The farther away you are, the easier it is to dodge her sword. Her sword is her only means of attack now. Just keep hitting her the best you can, and eventually she will go down. You're probably going to run out of energy, but it doesn't seem to matter as you can keep firing a shot anyway. I think it loses a lot of its power once your energy is gone, but whatever. For Phase 2, I believe the target has moved to her face, though I've still dealt damage to her by hitting her in the eye. So just keep shooting at her, dealing damage whenever you can. When she flashes, you know you did damage. This is definitely the longest battle of the game. It's going to take a lot of hits to take her down. I don't know if having no energy and using this weapon makes it weaker than the normal shot. You'd have to experiment with it. Just keep at it and eventually she will go down. Alright, we did it! She's defeated! Yay! But wait, we still have to get the other gem and save the world. Where? Oh, there it is. Okay. Collect the gem once it appears, your energy is restored, a little late, and you've beaten the game. That's it, I'm no longer subscribed to Daily Sega News. And how is that the 17th Street spook? We're in the... never mind. Yep, great job, you saved the city, and probably the world. You get a really nice bonus for beating all the stages, and then, yeah, that's it. Despite saving the world, we were too late in stopping them from turning everybody in the city into the same four people. Ah, poop. Well, at least Egon's happy, and we are getting a credits roll. And there's Peter. Nice pose, Peter. And there's Ray. 
He comes out while they give special thanks to Onion. Great pose, Ray. That's the same pose you've been given all game. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The song will finish after a few seconds, and then the game restarts. A great game. A lot of fun to play. But once is enough for now. And there you have it. That was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed watching it. That's going to bring an end to the Ghostbusters games. I hope you enjoyed watching them all. I'm really sorry it took so long to get the first couple out. I mean, I know some people have been waiting over a year for them. But I did it, and I hope you enjoyed them. Halloween is next Monday, so I wish everyone a safe and happy Halloween. I hope you have a great time and get all the candy you want. Eat until your stomachs bursts. Well, no, don't eat until your stomachs bursts, because then you might come back as zombies. It is Halloween. Next Tuesday starts November, so that starts the beginning of what I'm calling my Revenge Month. As I said before in my Returns video, the Revenge Month is where I play games that, if you watch the Bonus Stage Marathons run, I played poorly there, and I need to get revenge on. The main game I'm doing for this is Dragon Quest II SNES, the remake that was only released in Japan on the Super Famicom. If you happen to watch that, you'll know that it took me over 12 hours to do that damn game. The majority of the game I did fine. I got through the game fine. It was just the last boss that I couldn't beat. In the end, Cornjack even helped me out, and the two of us, we still couldn't do it. So I've been practicing like crazy to get back at it, and I think I've got it down pretty good. So you guys will have to wait and see. The other games I'm getting revenge on are Aladdin for SNES, which I did play really well. I just want to show off the alternate end credits, and it's a fun game. I'd like to play it again. Lion King on Genesis, which I played early morning during the Disney Marathon, and it was a complete fail fest. I don't even want to talk about how bad it was. And then another one that took me a while to remember was Toy Story for the Genesis. That was one I played toward the end of the marathon. That's when we finally got to the Toy Story games, unfortunately. And the first half of the game I did fine, then towards the harder levels, namely Sid's Workshop, I kind of bombed. So I went back and replayed that a lot. And I'm going to play it again. So, I hope you guys are looking forward to that stuff. It'll be out next month. So with that little announcement, that's going to bring to an end another two-tailed playthrough. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you, Space Cowboy.